Ah. Ano ko? Ah. Ano? Welcome to What the Fluff! I'm Lady Fluffy Opanda! I'm yeah. As always, on the show, we talk about stories from the past week that make us go WTF. Whether they be local stories, international stories, viral stories, whatever kind of stories, whatever basically has come across our path in the journey of life and it just makes us go <laughs> we are at this cute little park i've always called it the choo-choo park because it has a choo-choo train which i'm sure tam is totally keen to climb later i am ready i am so ready <laughs> tam loves heat give me a headline dog drives car into shopping mall <laughs> so basically what happened is this woman left her dog in the car oh, no. she left the air conditioning on for the dog which means so you have to leave the car on. so she has to leave the keys in the ignition yes and somehow <laughs> this dog disabled the parking brake and the car started moving <laughs> so this woman uh, a completely different woman was like walking out of the shopping mall and noticed this car like coming towards her. With a dog. So she like jumped out the way and then she realized that there was a dog behind the steering wheel. Probably with that little really smiley cool. grin of theirs and the tongue out. And the dog in the picture was a Yorkie. I'm not sure if that was Aww. the dog, but that would be hilarious if this was this tiny little Yorkie. Tiny little. <laughs> so that was my weird funny because i always do like really spooky scary stuff yes yes you <laughs> so do. i was like let me find something just like cute and bizarre and that was really funny i still don't understand so. how the dog how the car was able to because to push the handbrake down you have to push the button and then it depends because sometimes you get those parking brakes that you pull from like here yeah but again you have to like twist, twist it you literally have to like unclip because that's how the like handbrake is in my mom's car yeah. you got to pull and twist and then let it go it's not just a case of like you could like accidentally like hit it with your hip uh tunio yeah. the hip the hip <laughs> um and then it like it goes no like it's actually quite a bit and depending on how far back you pull that thing like I, if my brother parks that car and then i get in i have to use two hands just because of the guns. Um, I don't understand. Maybe she just she was too embarrassed to admit that she actually just forgot to put the handbrake. Up. Maybe, maybe she did just forget. I've done that sometimes. I mean, I haven't gotten out of the car and walked away. No, I have. But I've been like, have I done everything? Oh, oops. <laughs> we literally, like, we were at. Um, the green belt and basically when we got in the car i realized the handbrake was still down and the thing is like the way you park there's like a little bit of a ditch and then it like goes into this like valley of green fieldiness so <laughs> if there was like a strong gust of wind or so we would have come back and that car would have just been like in the ditch and i was just like i'm not telling the entire world but i just turned to my best friend and i was like tell I was just, I was so, so, I mean, it happens, like, you're busy talking or you're I thinking did, about other shit, or... I did walk away from the car, leaving my window open Ooh. once, but I was at the waterfront in the underground parking, so it's, yeah. like, a bit dim, Yeah. and, um, because it just, it looked like the window was closed, closed. Yeah. you know, because you look through the window, it's dark, and... Mm. Especially you know, when you have clean windows like you. The fact that there was no reflection on it didn't, like, sink in. But, like, when we... Because I, I had other people with me, so everybody was, like, talking and stuff mm. like that. And then I obviously wound down the window to get the ticket. Mm. And didn't wind it back up again. And <laughs> then when we came back to the car, everyone was, like, talking behind me. And I was like... <laughs> But everything was still in the car. Everything was in the car. Everything was fine. Oh, um, shit. But I was like, oh, my God. I just, like, got in the car, certainly. And I was like, 
guys let us know in the comments below if there's any kind of oopsie you've made with your car that like i don't know Whoops. if just one little thing happened it would have been a complete and total disaster fuck up. Yeah. disaster disaster so do, do you, you want to any... hear a ghost story hit me so this is actually a pretty famous ghost story but south africa well, it's known internationally, and uh -huh. it's actually been used in a film. You might know it. It's a little franchise called Pirates of the Caribbean. <gasps> the Flying Dutchman! Yes! <laughs> but I never... I mean, this might be news to only me. Yeah. But I never knew that it was actually linked to the Cape of Good Hope. Oh. Well, I knew because when we went to go watch the first one... My dad explained the Flying oh, okay. Dutchman to us. See, I, I didn't know that. I just knew it was a ghost ship. Yeah. And I didn't know the, the um, origin of it. And then I was watching Pirates of the Caribbean. And mm. I was like, what's Davy Jones' ship called? Yeah. What's that yeah. one called? And it's the Flying Dutchman. And I was like, oh, of course. Why didn't I remember that? So then I actually looked it up. So it's a ghost ship. It is doomed to never make port. And... Davy Jones actually makes a joke about that in uh, the movie when they're playing the dice game mm. and uh, Will Turner is trying to find out where he keeps the key to the chest that has his heart in it mm. and so then he basically his dad steps in to like you know make sure that because he wages the years that he has on the Flying Dutchman because yes. they do like a hundred years and then you can like you can you can leave but you're a part of the ship so. you know spoilers um so they they bet the the years that they have of service mm. so he was just betting so that he could find the key mm. and then his dad steps in and like wages his years yeah and then they end up losing spoilers if you haven't seen it um you got a lot of catch up on. Ends up losing and then his dad gets more years and then Will Turner's like fine and then Davy Jones is like, Well, you can do whatever the next time we make port and oh. they never make port. Oh. So ding. ding ding ding. I actually make a joke about that, so it's pretty cool. So it's doomed to sail the oceans forever. Mm -hmm. Uh the myth is likely to have originated from the seventeenth century golden age of the Dutch East India Company. Yep, that makes BOC, sense. BOC, which is fits in the movie mm -hmm. as well. In that particular movie, actually, what is his name? The short guy. Fuckface. That one, Lord <laughs> Fuckface. Yeah. What? Whatever. Commander Fuckface. Whatever his name is. He's part of the. He does have that face. You just want to punch though. The, he's part of the Dutch East India Company. Especially with so. like how schmarmy he was to Jack, who like refused. Because the whole theory behind Jack um, Sparrow owing a um, hundred years to the Flying Dutchman is because he didn't want to uh, trade in slaves, so he mm. freed a hundred slaves, which is why he owed a hundred souls. Like that whole, it's a Tumblr thing. Look it up. So yes, the Flying Dutchman. So the oldest version of the Smith dates back to the late 18th century. Sightings in the 19th and 20th century reported the ship being glowing with ghostly light. Mm. I mean, we haven't been on the 21st century that long. Like, the 20th century was like yesterday, so was this in like the 80s? We're like... <laughs> So, this is why I did the little bit of research, because the little picture here, I don't know if you recognize that mountain at all. Well, post a picture right here. Ding. <laughs> I don't know if you recognize it. Just a little bit. Just a little, it's, it seems really flat. Almost like uh, a table. Yeah. Maybe. So there seems to be a couple of different versions of what happens to this vessel and the basic story is is that the crew of the ship they went down in a storm and everybody on the boat perished. Which is super common for that time though. Uh, and some of the, the options, the options, some of the ideas are is that each person on that ship was guilty of something. So that's why they were all doomed and everybody okay. died. 
on the ship. If you see the Flying Dutchman, it's an omen of doom, like something bad's gonna happen. Right. Do you? Mm -hmm. Or it denotes like things like bad weather is coming. But bad weather and, like and doom. Are... But I mean, you know the kind of weather that we have down here. I mean, we're not yeah, called the Cape, the Cape of Storms, Storms for nothing. So we're, so. When we don't have winter. <laughs> you know, that's cool. That's fine. <laughs> Don't like we need water or anything, it's okay. She was an Amsterdam vessel and sailed from port 70 years ago. Her master's name is Van der Decken. <coughs> <laughs> he was a staunch seaman and would have his own way in spite of the devil. For all that, never a sailor under him had reason to complain, though how it is on board with them, nobody knows. So they've never like found any evidence of the ship, they've never like Mm, no, it doesn't mean like a seem so. Wreckage of a ship. Do you think that's the <laughs> that's the ship that Ariel explores? <laughs> I'm gonna just you know weave Pirates of the Caribbean. Well, it is a Disney thing, so it's not actually clear if this was an actual ship. Oh, uh, so I think they have theories of ships that it may have been. But I don't actually know if it was a legit ship for the Flying Dutchman. So it might not have uh, actually been, it could have just been a story passed on and passed on and passed on. Yeah, if there's actually evidence that a ship called the Flying Dutchman, or if there's any idea of a ship that could have become known as the Flying Dutchman, if okay. it disappeared at all. So, because there's a lot of cases of that where people are like, oh, there's this, 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 and this, but then there's no actual, like, Evidence. trail that, you know, oh, it could possibly be this thing that okay. then became something else. I have another creepy, like, example okay. of that. There is a mannequin inside the window of a dress shop. Okay. And then the dressmaker, I think, I think the dressmaker and her daughter live there and work there and right. then her daughter i think gets very sick and then at some point she completely just disappears and then a new mannequin like Don't you appears, hear when that <laughs> a new mannequin like appears in the window and people start to notice that it looks strangely familiar and similar to what the daughter used to look like so then it's believed that the daughter was embalmed and then made into the mannequin. For what reason? To wear wedding dresses, obviously. But, <laughs> <laughs> but in this particular case, there's no actual evidence that this ever happened. Or that it's actually possible yeah. to do that. Because if you try and put a, make a dead body into a mannequin, like you're not going to preserve the face enough for it to look like a mannequin it's not going to happen <laughs> modeled the mannequin on her then it wouldn't be a ghost story okay fine my story is about kfc so kfc is apparently only following 11 people on twitter okay right and it's not it's nothing creepy it's actually really really clever they are following the five Spice Girls and six guys named Herb. <laughs> because it's 11 herbs and spices for those of you who are like, why, why, why? So yeah, we don't, there's like, people on Twitter were just like, wait, my, like, what? That's Someone. So good. <laughs> Who ever thought of doing that? That's amazing. Yep. They, like, have evidence. Like, there's pictures of it. Oh, post it over here somewhere. Um, of the five Spice Girls and the 11 guys named Herb. People are just like, whoever runs the KFC account needs a raise. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, the KFC social media manager is probably just sitting there going, finally, somebody noticed. <laughs> somebody got the joke. <laughs> So yeah, so I thought that was a really cool, like, props to KFC. And then my other story that, honestly, like, I didn't understand. But Australian high school students have, were abusing an author after her poem was, in, was included in their exam. 
So remember in our matric exams, English papers, we always had an unseen poem. Mm -hmm. So this local Australian writer, Ellen van Nervens, van Nervens, her poem Mango was featured in uh, the English paper one for Australian students uh, for their high school certificate. And basically straight after the exam, it, like, it seems like every single Australian student went to social media to rag on this woman. Like it was abusive. And a lot of it was racist. Like, one of them posted a picture of a chimp typing on a typewriter. And because she's Aborigine, like, people took it to, like, the next extent. And they were like, it wasn't, we weren't trying to be racist. I don't quite understand the point. But there's an open Facebook group dedicated to the high school, the higher school certificate um, with over 70,000 members. And these students just went ape bashing this photographer and they were tweeting her and they were like posting shit on facebook and they're just like you know what the fuck is the point i mean i've had some what the fuck poems in exams all the time but you write the exam you'd be like what the hell was that and then you get over it like one student recorded a diss track because that's apparently all youtube is for now these days with uh, lyrics including Ellen can catch a clip full from a pistol and bitch if I ever see Ellen best believe she isn't safe because I'm throwing these mangoes straight at her face because the poem was called mango I don't know the literature world clapped back hard they were just like shut your face sit down shut up one person tweeted and said the kids abusing Ellen van Nierfen I do apologize for pronouncing that incorrectly if I am, um, are being lazy, entitled, and obtuse. It's bloody gutting to think they're about to enter the real world. I think in a way, that's kind of the example that some social media influencers have set yeah. for the younger generation. It's really easy, especially on YouTube and with a lot of the bigger creators, for there to be a lot of like YouTube drama. And it seems to be a thing now where people will like start beef between each other mm. for no particular reason other than to get views and one of the ways two of the ways that they actually sort of get back at each other is number one diss tracks yep which are all terrible <laughs> and then number two they'll like sick their army on their sick their like fan base mm. on any person that's now wronged them which is like seems to be the same mentality that these kids have being like you said something that i didn't like i had to do something that i didn't like you're the the reason for this mm -hmm. this is how we deal with it because mm -hmm. that's obviously how they've all grown up dealing with conflict and dealing with being upset and oh yeah. we're just gonna because i mean with cyberbullying it's not uncommon that if somebody has done something wrong in your eyes where people have turned around and created Facebook groups just hating on one person mm -hmm. where they'll get their whole class or the vast majority of the school to like harass them online. That's essentially what this is, is cyberbullying. They lashed out I'm on social media. I'm going to express media. my feelings on Twitter. And then what happens is it becomes trendy to do that. They'll try and like one-up each other because there's always this one-upmanship. I just... I don't know. It really made me go like, what the fuck? Because this is a local Australian author. It was an exam page. Like, they literally, the response from these kids was so uncalled for and so, like, left wing. Like, I just, like, what? Why? Like, that poem is not that bad. First of all, I've done it for cons, okay? And trust me, if I had Twitter <laughs> back then, th I probably would have been Literally hating. Just been tweeting what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's not. Oh. It's a, their response is completely uncalled for. It's very disrespectful. And, and like the sure. next morning, a lot of people deleted shit. But trust me, the internet's forever. There are always receipts, yeah, kids. You don't like create that. this international scene over one unseen poem. See what I, 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 see what I,
Right, I think that's all we have for today. Yeah. Yeah? Cool. That was fun, guys. So we're going to play on the train. We're going to waddle. Tam's going to play. I'm going to be that mom who just sits and films. Films <laughs> oh, her kids. Yeah, those 21st moms that just film their kids. You're uh, doing great. <laughs> You're doing great, sweetie. Don't forget to share. Don't eat the sand. It's quite a little hub of the community. Uh, yep, see, we're, we're always fried with the sun, don't we? I think it's because of that one time you were like, can we just move the sun? <laughs> now the sun's like, move me now. Move me now, bitch. Yeah, move me now, now, bitch. Yes, because we're that self-centered that we think the, the sun, sun is out to get us. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, because exhibit A. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We have been What the Flow. You can find all of our social media links down in the description bar below. And links to our personal channels outside of What the Flow down there as well. Yay. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time. dashboard of my car like a dumb <laughs> Let's see if I can fit down the slide without flashing anyone there are small kids in this park if you show your underwear can I sell it on the internet no <laughs>